Hello YouTubers, do you have a generator or air compressor that's loud and you want to quiet it down to an acceptable level? This video is about a sound reduction quiet box that I built for a Champion C46540 3500 watt portable generator. It's a good generator, but it is rather loud. After building the quiet box, I think that the sound level is now equal to or even quieter than the legendary and expensive Honda generators. This box can also be used to quiet air compressors since the sound reduction techniques are the same. Of course, how effective sound reduction really is can be a very subjective subject. How effective this quiet box actually turned out to be you can judge for yourself in the upcoming before and after video sound level comparisons. I will also show the exhaust system for safely running the generator in our carport without any danger of carbon monoxide poisoning no matter which direction the wind may blow. First I'll go over the design criteria for the quiet box. Next will be a video clip showing the drop in sound levels as the quiet box is assembled. Then there will be a clip that shows the exhaust system that directs exhaust gases up over the roof. Finally, I'll explain how everything can be stored in the bottom of a small closet. So let's get started. When designing this quiet box, I decided there were seven things that the box had to have. Number one, the box must decrease the generator noise by at least 50% or more. I think that this goal was surpassed significantly. Number two, since the box will only be used during extended power failures, it must be capable of being disassembled for storage in the minimum amount of space. The bottom of a small clothes closet below the hanging clothes was the best location for us. Number three, the box must be quick and easy to assemble and disassemble without having to use screws. Number four, the mating surfaces of the parts must be airtight to prevent sound leakage. Number five, there must be air intake and output ports to allow sufficient cooling. Number six, must be able to run the generator in our carport out of the rain without chance of anyone, including neighbors, getting carbon monoxide poisoning. Number seven, must be a modular design that allows the flexibility to install different types of sound baffles and fans. Now it's time for the assembly video. Something that needs to be pointed out is there will be a slight decrease in the generator's sound level in portions where I sped up the video. This slight decrease in sound level was caused by my video editing program. A note will be displayed in red over those portions. Also, the camera used to shoot the video was mounted on a tripod six feet from the generator. A shotgun mic was mounted on the camera to record the generator's sound. Now, without further ado, here's the assembly video. Here's the generator running alone. Please adjust your volume to allow the comfortable level. Note the hole in the exhaust end panel at the upper right, the one that I am putting into position now. The exhaust tubing will be inserted through that hole later in the video. Note the decrease in sound level that occurred just by putting the side panel in two position. Here are eight pins that will hold the entire box together. No screws or anything else are used to hold the box together. Each pin is just pushed into pre-drilled holes.
Note the hole in the lower portion of this intake end panel. Air from a fan will be routed through this hole for engine oxygen and cooling later in the video. This is the exhaust tubing clamp that will secure the exhaust tubing to the generator. The clamp is imperative to ensure that the exhaust tubing does not vibrate off and allow carbon monoxide to enter the house. Note the hole in the cover. Cooling air will be output through this hole into an output sound baffle later in the video. This illustrates the sound reduction of the quiet box. Now comparison of the sound from the generator alone and from the quiet box will be shown. Now I'll show how intake and output sound baffles can be added to the quiet box. The baffles are optional, but they do help to reduce the sound levels a bit more. This is the intake sound baffle. There is an internal partition that forces intake air to go up and make a 180 degree turn then down and then a 90 degree turn to enter the box. Air can make turns easily, but sound cannot. Here I'm threading the fan's power cord through the intake baffle, through the end panel's intake hole, and then to the 110 volt AC receptacle on the generator. The fan is an old 11 inch tornado that I already had. A smaller fan could be used, or the intake baffle could be eliminated, and three small fans mounted on the quiet box's end panel. Now I'm attaching bungee cords to hold the intake baffle tight against the intake end panel. The insulation in the intake baffle is pressing against the end panel for an airtight seal. The bungee cords are probably not really necessary, but they are worth it since airtight seals prevent sound leakage. This is the output sound baffle. Cooling air is forced to make a 90 degree turn to the left and then another 90 degree turn up to exit the baffle. Again, sound doesn't like to make turns. Note how the insulation in the baffle is making an airtight seal against the cover. I will now show the difference in sound levels with and without the sound baffles. I will now show the difference in sound levels for the generator alone and enclosed in the quiet box with sound baffles. This is an exhaust tubing support that I forgot to install in the assembly video. Its purpose is to support the exhaust tubing so that the tubing does not deform the hole in the insulation. Here's the exhaust setup. The flex tubing is 1 and 1 fourth inch and it's a perfect fit inside of the 1 and 3 8 inch 
inside diameter conduit pipe. It's just inserted into the conduit about six inches. The conduit pipe is extended above the roof using three inch PVC pipe. The PVC pipe has cutouts at the top and is capped. This design has two benefits. Number one, it allows extending the exhaust pipe 40 inches above the roof surface to meet international exhaust specifications. The engine's exhaust is dispersed high up into the air. Number two, the cap on the PVC pipe prevents rain from falling straight down into the conduit pipe. Any rain blown into the openings at the top of the PVC pipe just runs down the sides of the PVC pipe and drips harmlessly to the ground. The exhaust pipe is supported at the top with an aluminum strap and at the bottom with a metal bar from a chain link fence. I drilled a 1 4th inch hole into the concrete and a protrusion on the bottom of the metal bar fits into that hole. This prevents the bottom of the pipe from moving. So what happens when you have to refill gas and restart the engine? No problem, there's 5 inches of space by the starter rope to start the engine. I reversed the direction of the box so my back wouldn't be blocking the view. Sorry for the wind noise. There's a cutout in the bottom of the side panel for the power cable and safety chain. One end of the chain is locked to the generator's frame and the other end to a post. The power cable is long enough to extend to a central location in the house. Our small clothes closet is 59 inches by 29 inches by 32 inches to the bottom of the hanging clothes. The storage layout shown is 52 inches wide by 24 inches deep. The cover is 31 inches high and is at the back of the closet so it will not interfere with the hanging clothes. The rest of the items are 24 inches high so will be 8 inches below the hanging clothes. This is another storage layout that's arranged for a smaller footprint. It is 33 inches wide by 23 inches deep by 48 inches high. The insulation used for the quiet box is Roxel Rockboard 60. Rockboard 60 is ideal for building a quiet box since it's firm and can support itself when used horizontally like in the cover of the quiet box. I'd like to give a shout out to Sonny Lessery of Admore HVAC Products for generously providing the Rockboard 60 used in this project. Sonny was very supportive and is a great representative for Admore Products in Hawaii. Contact him if you need some Rockboard 60 for other heating, ventilation, and air conditioning products. This is my first YouTube video, so please give it a thumbs up if you found the information to be useful. I hope to post more projects that I've already made, like a collapsible DIY scaffold made out of wood for painting, and a very simple collapsible miter saw stand that can handle long or short lumber. Well, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.